Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to implement a CNN using TensorFlow. In this example, I use MNIST datasets, that's why I have here 28, 28, and 1. 28 here means rules, and the 28 here is column, and 1 means just one grayscale color. If your the image dataset is color image set, which is not the MNIST dataset, then it, this number will be 3 because you have the RGB, red, green, blue colors here. Since MNIST dataset is just gray spelled color, this number is just 1. So with this image, first layer I have here is convolutional layer 1, which have the 16 filters in it. And I apply the zero paddings here, that's why I have same size here, 28, 28, it's 16 now because I have 16 filters in the convolutional layer 1. After that, I have the pulling layer. I'm applying the max pulling here, which make the size as half size of the input. So it's 14, 14, and 16. Then I apply the convolutional layer again, but with the 32 filters. So I have 32 outputs here. After pulling layer, half size, so 7, 7, 32 here. So after getting all the activation maps here, I flatten this one as one array. So 7 by 7 by 32 is this number. And with this input layer, I have the fully connected layer having two hidden layers. First layer just have the 128 nodes. And the last hidden layer is 10 nodes because MNIST dataset have labeled from the 0 to 9. So we have 10 numbers here. That's why I have the 10 nodes at the last uh, hidden layer. We are comparing this one with the labels here, target value, and uh, we are minimizing this uh, cross entropy. This, this is just the difference between the target and the prediction. Using the optimizer here, I use the Adam optimizer doing the back propagation. We are optimizing the wave values and bias values in the convolutional layer 1 and 2 and the fully connected layer. So let's take a look uh, how I implemented in the TensorFlow. First, I initialized X and Y. X is the MNIST dataset, Y is the label of the MNIST dataset. X, MNIST dataset has 28 rows and 28 columns. That's why I have the 28, 28, and one grayscale is just one here. If it was color, then it would be three. I don't know how many samples here, that's why I have none here. And the Y is the label of the MNIST dataset, that's why I have here 10. Okay. Next one, I initialize the weight and bias here. Well, importantly, I use TF, the truncated normal here. Uh, the point for using truncated normal here is to overcome the saturation of the sigmoid in softmax. For example, if you use just TF, that random normal, then the, you may have some random values here. It is okay, but if you are in the truncated normal, uh, the value is very close to zero, and you can see if you see the sigmoid function here, if you have the value close to zero, then the, you will have the gradient more valuable. If it's more far from the zero, then you will have like gradient more close to zero. That means slower optimization, slow training. That's why I use the truncated normal for initializing the wave value here. And uh, here is how I made a convolutional layer. I use the tf dot and then the convolutional 2D here. And uh, here is stride 1, 1, 1, 1. Just striding 1 pixels, 1 pixels, right? And the padding same means output shape will be same as input shape. So I keep the 28 by 28 in this convolutional layer. And the max pulling layer 2 by 2, I use the corner size. The filter size is 2 by 2 rectangle, and the stride is like I'm moving this filter 2 after 2 pixel, 2 pixel, 2 pixel. Okay, that's my max pulling layer here. And here, the WN bias in the convolutional layer 1, you can see the filter size is 5 by 5 and 1 gray scale, and I have 16 filters in the convolutional layer 1. Because I have 16 filters, but I also need 16 here, okay? And uh, here is the convolutional layer with ReLU, that means I apply the activation function in the convolutional layer. After I get the convolutional value here, I just simply apply the ReLU function here. And uh, after that, I apply the pulling layer, 2x2 two two pulling layer, max pulling, so it will make the size of the input to the half size as an output here. After the max pulling layer here, I have a second convolutional layer, same filter size 5x5, 
and the input is 16 because the convolution layers have one have the 16 filters in it that's why 16 here and the second convolution layer I have the 32 filters in it because I have the 32 filters in it I also need also 32 here and same thing here and here once I got all the activation maps, now we want to use these activation maps as input to the fully connected layer so that I can classify this number uh, into 0 to 9, from 0 to 9. Okay, so here is the W value for the fully connected layer 1, which is 7 by 7 by 32, because if you see the overview here, the last one is 7 by 7 by 32. We are making this one. 1568 so here is the value and the bios also have 128 because first the hidden layer have the 128 nodes in it and here is how I flatten the activation maps into one array so here tf the reshape and the reshape is 7 by 7 and by 32 okay and here is the, the uh, fully connected layer once activation. We are using the ReLU function here, which is just flatten value multiplied by W plus bias here. And the second, second fully connected layer, hidden layer, is going to be just 10 nodes in it. Input is 128 because the first hidden layer having the 128 nodes in it, and the last hidden layer having just 10 nodes because we want to have 10 numbers as a prediction from this model. Okay, that's it. And uh, we are using the, the cross entropy, cross entropy for our loss function here. And we use the Atom optimizer to optimize this CNN model. And uh, here is how I can get the accuracy. And uh, here is how I train. Well, I basically use three epochs and the batch size is 500. And uh, here is the training. So here, every, uh, every steps here, every batch size going here, I put 500 and uh, optimize our weight values and bias values in convolutional layers and the fully connected layer. And uh, here you can see the steps and uh, every epoch I'm printing the validation accuracy. And uh, lastly, you got the 97.7, uh, .7, which is great. So this is it, and uh, you always can come to my GitHub website here, download and uh, practice yourself. Thank you very much, and I will see you on next video.